Hi folks, I just started using Slate Trigger 2 and like any new plugin, all the features and all the controls and everything were totally intimidating to start. I wish there was just like a quick start guide to get me up and running as fast as possible. So that's what I'm gonna do today is give you a really quick overview on the basics of Slate Trigger 2. I needed to learn how to use it because I just released my virtual instrument Robot Dog Drums Rock as a Slate Trigger 2 TCI pack. I wanted to be able to use these samples in my own productions to replace or augment acoustic drum tracks. Anyway, let's get into it. Here's the track. The drums already sound really good, but we're gonna make them sound a little more modern, a little more tight and punchy. When we're done, they'll sound like this. Okay, let's get into it. Let's actually start with the snare track. And we're gonna throw the Slate Trigger 2 plugin on it. I use the stereo version because I know these are stereo samples. All right, let's play the track. Just make sure it's coming through the plugin. All right, cool. We can see it there. We think it's probably doing something, but there are no samples loaded. So let's load up some samples. Go to the browser. I'm gonna go to RDD Rock Snares. Let's use the DW NOB. Put the direct sample in this slot and the room sample in this slot. Go back to triggering. Let's hear that. Let's just turn the room down so it's a little more listenable. All right, now that we have a sample loaded up, we can adjust the triggering settings. You might wanna to go to a part of the song where the drummer is hitting the drum as soft as they ever hit it during the entire song. This drummer has this quick little fill and we're gonna loop it there. Deactivating the plugin, it sounds like this acoustically. All right, so we're gonna loop that so we can adjust the settings on trigger. Notice that it's not picking up the quieter drum hit. The first thing we're gonna to try to adjust is the detail setting. Let's lower the detail setting till it looks like it's going to pick up that softer drum hit. All right, you see these two bars? You open and close those until they are below the peak of the transient you wanna capture, but it's still not capturing that. So our next thing to try is raising the sensitivity. Let's lower the detail where it looks like we're capturing those, and then we'll raise the sensitivity until we're actually capturing those hits. Let's try it. Okay, we're capturing it. Let's kind of just fine tune it, dial it in, so it's only gonna pick up those hits and not other bleed or anything in the track. Back it off until it doesn't capture it anymore and then raise it up just enough so it does capture the hit we want. You can then go back and maybe fine tune the detail a little bit, really dial things in. Great, these are just some basic settings that are gonna get you up and running on this as quickly as possible. Let's check out one other thing that's really helpful, especially for this pack, because it has a lot of different variations, soft to loud, in the drum hits. Let's go down here to where it says snare and change the articulation to rim shot. All right, now you hear the softer hit is like the click of the stick against the rim, like a very soft rim shot. We don't really want that. It's not really realistic in this situation. So we're gonna click here on view curves and we're gonna adjust these range knobs. But first thing we wanna do is link those range knobs by clicking here and here. And what this is gonna do is it's only gonna trigger the samples that are in a certain range. So we're gonna eliminate those clicky sticks and only get more fat drum sounds out of the rim shot articulation. Let's raise the minimum range and that's gonna give us that effect.
about 70 is working well for this track. All right, cool. Let's actually hear it in the context of the mix. That's sounding pretty great. And the acoustic kick that's already there, that sounds awesome too. But for good measure, let's go in and replace the kick as well. Put another stereo trigger plug-in on the kick track. Let's go right ahead and load up a kick sample first off. We'll use this DW Maple kick and room sample. A fun fact about these samples are, these are actually samples that I took from this actual kit on another session long ago, years ago, but I know they're very compatible with this drummer and this drum set because they're actually the same instruments that I use to make these samples. So that's pretty fun. Let's start adjusting this kick track. Solo it. Lower the detail. And of course, let's lower that room track because it's obnoxious. We need a lot less room on this kick track. That's working pretty well. Let's hear it in the context of the track. Cool, that works. Let's uh, go into some of the other features of Trigger. I think they'll be really helpful for adjusting this kick sample. We'll solo the kick again. We'll go into view curves. This time we're gonna curve link the attack, sustain, and release, as well as the range min, range max. Let's adjust the range first, because I actually want these kick hits to be a little more consistent. I don't want to go through the whole range of dynamics on this kick sample. All right, that's cool. They're sounding more consistent. All right, so I'm hearing the kick is like a little too clicky and it's like a little too boomy. There's too much sustain. There's too much attack and sustain. So let's adjust those by linking the attack, sustain, and release and adjusting those. We can take a little bit of click out of the kick by just adjusting the attack a little bit, like maybe set this to two milliseconds or three milliseconds or five milliseconds. It'll just take that poppy sound off the front of the kick. Let's try it. All right, that's a lot more natural sounding. Let's reduce the sustain and adjust the release some so it's not so boomy. Lower the sustain first. That's a little tighter and we'll shorten the release so it cuts off and fades away more quickly. Okay, that's pretty good. I think that's the best we can get with how this sample was recorded, but I think it'll work really well on this track. Let's listen to it in the context of the mix. All right, there's one other thing I want to know is that there's a mix knob on this plugin and you can roll that back and that will blend between the original sound on the track and the sample that you just added in. But I will say, especially with this pack of samples, I wouldn't necessarily want to do that because the samples are processed and the raw kick or snare track are not processed. So what I would probably do is duplicate the snare track, have one running trigger and then put a little bit of processing, however much you want to do on that acoustic snare, and then blend those two side by side using faders. That's just how I would do it. Anyway, thanks for watching. If this was helpful, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and maybe check out some of my products. I've got the best acoustic drum sample plugin you can buy right now. It comes with this TCI pack for free, or you can buy it separately. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Cheers.